So I'd, I'd made some viewports and I'm looking at my project. Uh, just before I go any further, why don't I save this? So what I was going to do was call this uh, conference center example. Right. Save that out. Um, now it shows up here. Uh, what I wanted to do is show you how I could kind of query the project um, and then come up with uh, ways of grouping objects together so that they make some sense. Now you, you might think, well, you've already got objects grouped together because you've got them from Revit, but remember that you might be doing this with, say, an, an AutoCAD file with information on levels or a microstation file with information on layers. and, and uh, so th there has to be the flexibility to let you manage data that's not already organized in, in advance. Um, this is a particularly easy example because it came from Revit. But the sequence would be something like this. If I, if I pick on the glass on the front of my building here and I were to go up to the properties, I can look at the, the element that I selected and see that the name has a value of glazed. Or I could look at the material and say that the material has a name of glass. Right. Now, so what I'm looking for is some property that will let me make a, a multiple selection um, a, with with one step, so I don't have to physically go and select all of the objects in my model here. And and the way this works is that so let me just remind you that here when I looked at the property it said name gla element name glazed right so if I go to find items um, now I can limit my search to any one of those uh, trees but since I want this to apply to the whole model I'm not picking a particular tree I'm coming down here and saying item let me just move this a little bit so you can see it a bit clearer. I'm dragging out the length of the columns. Item where the name equals, I'm going to type in, oops, glazed. In fact, that's maybe too specific. Let, let me say uh, here uh, contains glazed. Right. Let me remove that, um, sorry, delete that condition. So I've got item name contains glazed. And if I if I uh, select that row, oops, sorry, control Z, not working, item name contains glazed. And then I'm saying find all see what it did is go out and select all of the items that said glazed in the name. So then I've got a couple of choices here. I use them to go out and find the items to make a, a kind of a logical grouping of all of the glass. Um, I'm just thinking just to show you this is that I could also have said item um, material equals glass like this and I can right click on that row and say this is an or condition so now anything where the name contains glazed or the material is equal to glass find all will we'll search and add objects to that selection set or search set I should say um, so th this is how I could go around like gathering all the foundations or uh, all of the brickwork um, and then under my sets, if I right click uh, a current selection, what I've got selected here, this is useful but not as useful as a search. Uh, the current selection means that it's remembering these objects, the ones that I had. It shows a little square box, a blue square box, and I can go in here and I could say all glass. But, and so, so now if I pick on that, it's going to show me all of the glass here. But 
if a new piece of glass appeared in my project because somebody had updated an NWC file, it wouldn't be added to this list at all. Right? Because, because this is kind of a manually constructed selection set. There's the other option in here which you say add the current search. And the current search is saving what you had under the finder find items option and this is dynamic this means that if somebody updates the NWC file and it's got glass in it then that glass is automatically added to the to what I'm going to show you which is the the search set that we created I'll just rename that all glass right so the, the search set has the binoculars that indicates that it's kind of dynamic and looking for content and adding them to, this, to the op options that are selected because it's coming from uh, a search set, not a selection set. This one is, le is less useful, but there are occasions when you want to use it. So I'm just going to delete that. Uh, let me delete the other one as well, because he here's the great thing is that you can take those options and you can output them so output current search sets you can save them out to give them a, a name it'd be a, in an XML file and those can be used in any project right so if I if I go back here I'm going to remove this it also follows that I should be able to import selection sets so if I go to my um, it's actually on the application menu and I say import these search sets remember these are the ones where the search specifies certain criteria to find the objects and I've got this one already saved called the conference center if I look under my sets now you'll see that these already have all of the virtual objects assigned to a selection set and I can show you it easily if I if I go to say um, uh, I thought it had brickwork in here somewhere into the search sets well you see you see if I pick on something it's not, you see it highlight in the in the model with a, a blue color and that that color is another thing that could be changed under options to any color that you want. So this is how you make logical uh, combinations of objects. Let's say, I don't know if you see that change. I think you can see the blue on this one as I move up through the floors. You see the steel change to the blue color when it's selected. But, uh, that is how I would work through this. The other thing is, of course, it works in reverse. So if I pick something in my model and I go back to here, you see it, 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 it'll be, it'll be um, under my selection, it'll be highlighted in here. Let me just stop it at that point. The main, uh, and I forgot one more thing is that it gets annoying when things collapse on you, so you can use the the pin option up here to keep options expanded, and then you then it don't have to bother about them collapsing. So this way, I thought I had a exterior brickwork, right? So if I select on that in here, I find it, sh it highlights and shows all the exterior brickwork. It also shows all the objects under here that are uh, selected the selection tree. So there are all my elevator shaft walls, floor slab, second floor. You see I can pick it and see it in there. And then if I pick objects in the model, they're also found in the selection key and show up. Um, so let me now unpin those and I'm ready to move on with how you actually use those selection sets to do uh, 
flash detection timeline or presenting your your projects. 